Hi, we're live. Hello, everybody. Welcome. Welcome to our first live stream at the office in three months, right? It's been three months since we've live streamed together and in the studio, yeah. But last time I live streamed with you was two months ago at Montreal Comic Con. So Which I've was been, cool. Yeah, I've been dying to get back on here with you. This is going to be fun today. Yeah, we got a lot. We got a lot to do today. Yeah, we're going to talk your ear off today. We've got a lot to share, so stick around. At the uh, about midway, we might give away our we, big prizes. We got. So what are we giving away today? We got, we got big stuff. Jill right? Valentine nice. and Brian Fury. And Jill Valentine, by the way, for those of you waiting, we we did get a little sneak peek of the new face. It's coming. It's still coming. It's coming along. <laughs> it's being finished. And we're giving out some uh, some other stuff. We're and then at the swag. very end, we're going to give some Pure Arts t-shirts. Very cool. Very cool. Yes. So we got lots to talk about today. I actually feel like we're in a newsroom. So we got something different today with the whole desk and chairs thing. It's like I'm, we're, we're reporting live. From San Diego. <laughs> <laughs> so this is very cool. So obviously today, big day for... Amunet. Amunet. This is a huge day. So today we released Amunet, which is being received really, really well. You guys love her. Love her. Mother of the Creed. Mother of the Creed. What's what's the hashtag that's trending today? AC Sisterhood. AC Sisterhood. Which I really like. Yeah, it's yeah. Uh, a really, really nice statue. It's doing super, super well. Uh, you guys are supporting us really, really nice. Thank you so much. We're glad you guys like it. Um, it's kind of an interesting way that this project came about too, right? It was just like, it was very quick. We're like, we were just told like, guess what? This statue's coming. It's already in production. It's already being boxed. We can launch it in time for the 15th anniversary edition, which we're gonna talk about here shortly. And boom, that's it. So that's why this project just kind of came out of nowhere. And that's also why it's shipping super fast. So for those of you that are ordering this, um, it's gonna be in loaded in containers literally in the next couple of weeks and, and on its way. So, I mean, technically they're already ready to go. We've seen the boxes, they're packed. So it's really just a matter of us putting in the container at the factory, uh, putting in the order for the container and getting it here and it's, uh, it's done. It's cool. It's kind of fun when the licensor is really eager to get a product out because then things happen a lot faster, right? Exactly. So Assassin's Creed, as you know, is turning 15 this year and there's a bunch of celebrations, including this Saturday, there's gonna be a big showcase. I believe it's at 3 p.m. Eastern time. There's gonna be the AC showcase online. You can check out the trailer. I'm gonna post about it on our social media so you'll, you'll see the trailer there and they're gonna dish about everything Assassin's Creed and feature Amunet. Yeah, so it's gonna be it's gonna be a cool show. They got all kinds of goodies. And oh, and the other thing is too, correct me if I'm wrong, but these all come with like a barcode inside the box or on the box. Right. Right? Yes. That you guys can scan. So um, Ubisoft is doing a whole AC celebration for the 15th anniversary where a bunch of merch and products and stuff from the Assassin's Creed world have um, QR codes on them. And if you scan them, it takes you to a prize like landing page where you can win all kinds of stuff, in Q including a whole bunch of Pure Arts goodies. Yeah, there's, uh, there's statues, there's orlogs, there's all kinds of stuff, like full size statues like this bad boy right here. So yeah, there's all kinds of stuff. So go check that out. So when you do get your box, make sure you scan it. And the, I believe that's good like for like a year. So it's not like, you know, don't worry. It doesn't run out in the next week or two or anything. You have a super long time to, to scan and try and win some goodies. So what do they have? Prizes and also percents off? Yeah, so there's, there's well, for Pure Arts, there's coupon codes. There's free shipping. There's percentage off. There's money off. There's statues. There's uh, Orlog. I like everything, basically. Free shipping is a good one. Free shipping is a real good yeah. one, Dep depending where you live. If you're in Australia, in Australia. watching this, <laughs> you're definitely going to like the free shipping. That's, that's for sure. Let me go look at the chat. What's going on here? Does Cassandra have the QR code? Yes, Cassandra should have the QR code. Ooh, I don't know if I got myself in trouble with that, but it should. <laughs> it should have the QR code. Long live the queen. Yes. yes. Queen Elizabeth has passed. Rest in peace, Queen Elizabeth. That's, some people are like, meh. And other people like me, where we just like grew up with the Queen was a big deal. Yeah, that's it's pretty sad. So my main question is, what are we going to do with our Canadian money? Are we going to switch? Because of course in Canada we have the Queen on our money. So are we going to do a whole switch over? Anyway, we'll see. To be, to be we have Charles <laughs> yeah. now. We have yeah. King Charles <laughs> on there. So yeah, definitely rest in peace, the Queen. Um, let's see. The statue is awesome. Do you plan to create an amulet? Statue in resin for the Animus collection. That's a that's a good question. I knew that. I, I kind of knew that was going to happen. Um, <clears throat> so not right now. There are no plans for a resin version. Um, the Animus series. I would say the next 
three are already planned. But with that said, obviously with the uh, super interest on Aminette, uh, I would say it's definitely in the cards at this point. I mean, that's a conversation we're, we're going to have. But there is a lot. I would say there's like, I want to, you know, I don't want you guys to like, like hide your wallets, but I would say over the course of time, there's probably like a dozen animus statues that we want to do overall. Um, but yeah, I mean, you guys seem super interested in this character, then we'll definitely put it on the table. But the next three are already kind of set. And the next one, the next one, actually, Ooh, the, the next, next one. one is being, <laughs> uh, the prototype is in printing right now. So that's, that's exciting. So that, mm -hmm. that'll be coming out real soon. So yeah, but I mean, we're going to announce that. I suspect that's going to be like a Black Friday, November thing, I think. Because it'll definitely be at the end of the year, right? We always kind of try and space them out quite a bit. So I think the next one will probably be November. And then that's when we should have our big <clears throat> Animus Rave party on live stream. We're going to we do an Animus Rave out. party where I don't party yeah, or rave. <laughs> you can just sit there and judge while I dance around the Animus statue. I will do that. We're going to have a really, it's going to be so awkward. It's going to be painful. <laughs> no, I promise. We'll, we'll make it cool. But alternatively, what do you think about a Bayek statue in this form? Yeah, that's true. Are well, because she needs, that? she would need a Bayek next to her. Yeah. So I'll, I've seen some comments online of people asking for more affordable, smaller pieces. So would you want to see Bayek that or would other be cool. assassins? Next three. Oh no, my poor bank account. <laughs> <laughs> the the Fry twins. That the twins. Okay, mm. I would just like to say I am on the twins like team. I have requested the twins multiple times. So like, it's I'm sure it's going to happen at some point. Will it be the Animus series? Will it be a diorama sort of similar to what we did for uh, Arcane? I don't know. We'll see. But we're hearing you guys on the twins. Trust me on that. I'm communicating the twins. We're yeah, all keep the twins. letting us know what you want to see <laughs> because we're here for you, basically. Uh, let's see. All right. So, yes, Arno, please. Connor. Yeah, there's a guy. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Ah. I can't answer all these because like, some are coming, some are not, some are in plans. We'll, we'll see. You no, can right. do your you standard Dan answer, which is I can't talk about I it. I can say the next statue that's coming has E in the title. <laughs> <laughs> that's the classic one. So, yeah, we, we definitely have some good stuff coming up. So, stay tuned for that. Do we want to do a, a little close-up? Do you want to do a close-up? You want to try your close-up Yeah, app? I have okay. a handy app. Brian, right, are it. you ready for us to try that out? Oh, Brian, right. are we good over there? All right. By the way, how's the sound? Can anybody hear us okay? I'm going to go around to Will the we see end. more arcane in the future? Would love an older Jinx and Vi? Definitely mm. going to be more arcane in the future. Yes, 100%. Is it, now, right. how is that looking to everybody? Is this working? Right here, we go. Dun, 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 dun. Should I do music? Is the quality kind of meh? Is the quality kind of meh? It's a, it's a Mac, it's an Apple product, what do you want? Yeah. <laughs> it looks good on my phone. Does it look good on the phone? Yeah, she looks All really right. pretty. Yeah, it is a really nice statue, actually. It is a very nice statue. I don't know about the snake, I don't like snakes. I don't know about statues with danger noodles on them. <laughs> and it's a very large danger noodle. So let's see, is this working? See, I don't know my snakes. I thought it was a cobra, but apparently it's an asp. Well, an asp is like a very large cobra, okay. right? I think. You're good. You're good. How is everyone liking the close up? Is, is there it anything working? Oh, yeah, I love the details. Oh, yeah, we're good. Good. Get her skirt. Oh, I like the back of the skirt. Yeah. If there's another Jinx and Vi, will it be available in Europe this time? Um, it was available in Europe the first time. It just sold out so freaking fast that it uh, it was over too quick. I'll, I'll explain that after we're doing we'll do the close-ups. So yeah, so this is a PVC figure, um, ten inches tall, I believe it is, twenty-five. Uh, centimeters, 25.1 centimeters. It's actually a mixed media, so it's PVC and ABS. And there's the base. I'll show the base. I can't see. It's not. There's like a delay. But that's okay. I can see it. Now this is a prototype, so there's no. Oh no, there is stuff on the base. Never mind. I lied. There's the base. Let's see if you can. Can you kind of see the base? Like there's oh, the our logo yeah. and stuff. There's nothing really super exciting on the base, but of course it's stamped with all our branding and everything. 
And this is an open edition statue. So some people were asking what open edition means. So open edition uh, means that there is no set limitation to it. So there could be 5,000, there could be 15,000. We basically produce it while there's interest. Um, and then if we see that it, the sales are really, really slow, we make a final batch and then the molds are retired and, and that's kind of the end of that. Right, so these are PVCs, the molds are different. It's not like a resin, um, it's not like a resin mold. So resin molds are you know, silicone based molds and they tend to get scrapped after 100 castings or whatever and they have to be redone. PVC molds are actually metal and are crazy expensive to make. So they last pretty much you know, forever until you don't need it anymore. This is really testing how steady I can hold my hand. Right, and I'm, I'm trying to make a, I'm trying to be a, a turning plate here. I don't know if this is working. Details are great. The fact that the base statue looks like when the crypt is awesome. Yeah, yeah. So there we go. <laughs> I'm trying to resist going like, yeah, like that. <laughs> like effects in the video, you know, where it's slowly rotating and then it speeds up and then it slows down again. It's all done by hand. It's, we don't it's use, all done twisting yeah. it. From and the you can see here, like you can see this has all got, like these are all flexible. You know, it's a lot of flex on it. You can see like even the scarves, you know, that's the difference between the PVC versus the resin. You certainly got a lot more flexibility on them. Um, unfortunately, we don't have a box, right? I don't think this came in a box. Did we, have, did we get a box? Nope. We didn't get a box. Sorry guys, we don't have a box to show you. But the box is very much like the Ezio PVC box, which is, Right there. Okay, you continue to zoom. I'm going to get a box. All right, here we go. <clears throat> All right. <coughs> Excuse me. That's kind of the, that's the box there. So this is for the Ezio. Uh, this is the, they call it the Animus Collection at Ubisoft, but, which I know is confusing because it's not the Animus statues we have, but anyway. That's the box there. So it's going to be a very similar box to this with a clear clamshell inside that holds the, uh, that holds the statue. So there you go. That's that. All right. I'm going to pop off the app, Brian. All right. Let's put Etsy over here. By the way, if you guys came to Gamescom, you were able to buy that Etsyo as well as some other goodies that we had, which is super cool. Put her back. All right, let's see. Any questions? The snake looks great. It does. I don't like snakes, but yeah, she does look good. Um, is she part of the Animus collection? I do not believe the Animus collection is used on the box. It's the 15th anniversary edition is uh, what it's called. So I don't think it'll say, at, like, um, like here it says Animus collection on the box. I don't think it will. Um, but tell you what, I will confirm that. So if I'm lying, if it is going to say Animus Collection, I'm going to check the box. And if I lied, I will post on the Facebook group, go and check the, the uh, Pure Arts Collectors group, and I will post a picture of the box or I'll confirm what it says. But as of now, it's not. <laughs> we reached over 6,000 on our Facebook group. We did. Congratulations. Yeah, congratulations to us, all of us. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. So yeah, the, the Collectors group has passed 6,000 members, which is uh, crazy. That's, it is. <laughs> it's because, uh, what was it, a year ago or something? A year and a half ago? Was that a thousand? So that's pretty, pretty impressive. Uh, let's see, what else is going on in here? Do All we right. want to chat about The Witcher, perhaps? Let's talk about The Witcher. Do you guys want to talk about The Witcher? How many people are online right now? Is there like 50,000 people on? I can't tell. Ryan, do you know? No. Okay, we don't know how many people are. We're in the dark. Oh. Cool. There's at least a thousand people online right now watching us. This is very is there exciting. anyone on Twitch watching us on Twitch? Nice. Okay. Yay! Why don't we talk? Do we want, is Twitch <laughs> is the Twitch discussion on here? Do we want to talk about this? I do want to talk about it. Do we, okay. Because I'm really excited that we're even on Twitch. Of course, it's the future. It makes a lot of sense for us to be on there. And you had a great idea. I don't know. Well, we'll see. Was, uh, let's, I'm going to keep an eye on the chat right here. I feel like I need to put the laptop here, but it's okay. So. We have an idea for Twitch. So aside from doing streams of we're not sure what, I thought it would be fun to do one where we, once a week you have lunch with me. So we'll call it Lunch with Dan, where we sit down and I literally have my lunch. And while we're having lunch, I will just look through industry news, um, look at behind the scenes stuff that's going on with Pure Arts, what statues are coming out there, what I like, what you guys are talking about. Maybe we'll trash talk some other statues. 
Things like that. We can call it lunch with Dan. We do it once a week. So I don't know. You guys like that idea? Let us know. Uh, and if you think it would be interesting and fun, we'll give it a try. Uh, if you don't mind me, like I'll be like. Also, the, I'll try and eat quietly. <laughs> the office joke because Dan actually has two lunches <laughs> and snacks. So we're thinking he could start with a lunch and then end with a lunch. I'm like the, the Hobbit. We definitely have second breakfast. Eleven <laughs> Z's. Eleven Z's. <laughs> yeah. So we start with lunch, and then when I say goodbye, I'm actually starting my second lunch. Yeah. So this is with a snack in between. You guys are in for a treat. So we'll do like a scheduled <laughs> once a week, and then maybe we'll, if we like it, we'll do more. But yeah, so that's what we're thinking of doing. So let us know if you like this idea. Um, it, 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 be, it, might, it might be fun, it might be crazy. And it would be like, it, I'm a little scared because you never know what might load up on my desktop. Like this is always, <laughs> this is always a little scary about the whole streaming thing. Uh, can we just restrict it to a, like a little tiny square on my desktop? That's a way like to get people to watch because gonna, they're gonna wonder like, ooh, what are we gonna have a sneak peek? It was today? a good idea until it cost me my job three weeks later. Yeah, great. Then you can do your offshoot Twitch channel. And maybe it'll, uh, maybe it'll morph into something too. Yeah. You know, we could try it out, see where it leads. We could do a day of just hanging out with me. Yeah. Like replying to customer service tickets. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> We're not going to do that. All right, cool. Okay, good stuff. Um, yes, oh, it was very nice. We're going to talk about the games really. We're going to talk about the events really soon, but it mm. was amazing to meet all of you that came to see us at Gamescom. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure. You guys were awesome. The cosplayers, the people that support everything, the whole thing was really cool. But we'll, we'll talk about that momentarily. I don't want to screw up the whole schedule here. We have we a have. schedule, Dan. We have a schedule to keep, which I will totally screw up. Okay, The Witcher? The Witcher. Let's talk about The Witcher. Yeah. It's a little bit controversial at times. Right? But, Our uh, controversial Witcher statue. But he is looking good. So The Witcher statue um, launched while we were at Gamescom, which was hilarious because we had all these beautiful pedestals and everything all set up. And then this like kind of wrinkly blanket like shoved onto <laughs> like a big statue thing. Like it just stuck out like a sore thumb. So it was pretty funny. And people were like, what is it? Da, da, da. And we had each pedestal, you can go online and see, we posted photos of this. You can go on the, uh, on the Facebook group. And each pedestal behind it had a huge mural that were beautifully designed by our design team. They were really, really nice. Except The Witcher. The Witcher didn't, so you couldn't even get to see what it looked like. It was literally just like a, it was like clouds. It was, it was, it was really nice. So anyway, one o'clock rolls around local time and we finally launch it, which was 7 a.m. here, right? It was 7 a.m.? Yeah. Very so early. one o'clock in the afternoon, we unveil it. And People started contacting me from the office being like, yeah, some people are commenting on the face. They don't like the face. They don't like this. They don't like that. And I'm like, the face looks fine. I don't know what it is. So anyway, I, I was feeling a little bad about it. But then people coming into the booth were freaking out about the Witcher statue. Like, and then what happened was is that later on in the day or the next day, people that saw it online first came to Gamescom to see it. And they were all like, wow, this looks so amazing in person. It looks different from the photos, or the photos don't make it look as good as it looks in person. People loved it. There was not a single person that came to see it that said anything negative about it. Like, all of them loved the statue. So it was a huge hit. People were freaking the F out. Like, they, they loved it. So uh, we had a couple of scares where some people were trying to, like, grab at the wings. They, you know, they wanted to see if it was real wings or something. I'm not sure what was going on there. Oh but we're like, please don't touch. <laughs> um, and the other thing, too, that I liked about it is that I got, to, I got to look at it, like, a long time because we were, you know, I was just next to it. So we got to really examine it quite a bit. And it was like the more I looked at it, I was like, yeah, I'm not, I'm not seeing it. So... I mean, what we're going to do is we're going to continue to show you. And some people were like, the neck looks too long. So I don't know if that's just the lighting or whatever, like, because it's super dark in the photos. It's like really dark on the sides of his neck and then bright here. Does it make the neck look longer? I'm telling you in person, I don't see it. I don't see it at all. It looks totally fine. So what we're going to do is we're going to, um, as soon as we get it back in the office, unfortunately, we don't have it in the office yet. It's still coming back from Gamescom, but because we would love to show it to you. So as soon as we get it here, we're going to do a live stream. And we're going to, Melissa's going to get the app on her phone and we're going to go every square inch of this thing. And I think that you guys will find that the more we show it to you in natural light and we're not trying to be fancy and, you know, you get to see it on video, see it in just, just for yourself. I think that you guys are going to find that maybe there was some people that were a little quick to judge on the face because it really looks fine. Also, the, um, some people were saying like, oh, the sculpt is this, the sculpt is that. It's actually the 3D model from the game. So CDPR gave us the model, 
and we simply just manipulated the positioning of it so that we could put it in the pose that we needed. But the head is the actual model from the game. So it's not like we just created a model from scratch and oh, it's off and the eyes aren't cart white and the, the nose isn't right. It's literally the model from the game. So, I mean, it cannot be any more accurate than that. It's from the game. Um, there was a phenomenon, and it was interesting because, let me see, there's some comments. People are asking stuff. Let's see. Uh, sometimes, it's, yeah, it is better to see it in real life. Um, so, one of the things I, I, I discussed, and I'm sorry, I'm going to blow up our schedule today, by the way. Do it. One of the things that I discussed with some people in person, because, they, like I said, people were like, well, they just like, it didn't look the same at all to them when they saw it in person. And there's, there's something that I like to describe, and I see this all the time with statues. I don't see it just with the Witcher. I see it with statues all the time. When you look at a human face, um, your brain, like your brain is pre-programmed to view things in certain ways. Like we're to, and it's basically to like basically save processing time in your brain. So for example, a great example is your brain actually skips when you look. So when you go to the side like this and you go to the side like this, you don't actually process what's, what's in between the directions you're looking at. Your brain actually skips it. So that's actually why a lot of people will say like when they turned, they didn't see the cyclist or they didn't see this. It's because when you turn your head like that, it automatically like, you don't see a blur. It just like, it seems like you go from that to that and you miss whatever was in the center. So that's like an example of some of these things. So one of the other things is your brain is programmed to look at human faces. So when we look at a human face, you know, eyes are half an inch deep from your nose and you know, your lips are a certain size and the way the shadow falls, that's what your brain is used to. And when you take a face that's this big, or you take a face that's this big, like it's literally like the size of your thumb, and you blow it up, and you look at it as though you're trying to process a human face, it looks weird. The shadows are weird, it doesn't look realistic, it doesn't look like the person's face. But then when you see it in person, well your brain is now knowing, okay, I'm not looking at a photo of someone's head, and in my head I'm automatically thinking of it as like a huge human head. Now that your brain is seeing it in scale, and that it's this tiny little thing, it suddenly looks fine. It, and I've seen this for so many statues, you know, like at, Ga at uh, San Diego Comic-Con, I, I got a chance to finally see a bunch of uh, uh, Saito statues that I wanted to see in person that I thought were meh, a little off, and Hot Toys as well. And in person, they were totally fine, totally fine. And that's, that's how I explain it. I've had this conversation with so many people. So guys, I don't want to say more than that, but I, believe me, when you see the statue in person, it looks great. The face is dead. It looks, it looks fine. So, so we have our work cut out yeah. for us in making this translate into an online image. That's it. So, so we're going to continue. Be patient. So we're, so we're, <laughs> that's it. So the plan is, guys, we're going to show some more footage. Um, we're going to try and show it off more. Um, we'll work on photos that better translate. Like, I would love to say, like, when I look at the photo, it looks like exactly the statue that's next to me, you know? But we'll see what we can do about that. Um, and we'll continue to post more and more media for you guys so you can check it out from like every possible angle under different lighting. And, uh, and then we'll go from there. And if we see that some tweaks need to be made, uh, we'll try and do our best. But you know, once we launch something, it's, it's pretty tough. But like I said, in person, the feedback that we got was everybody loved it. Um, <laughs> yeah. And like I said, you know, it's the actual model from the game. So I, mean, I can't, you can only beat this into the ground so much, right? <laughs> and Brian, you showed some of the production pics while we were talking, right? Yeah, so I'm going to post those online and you can see not only the amount of work that went into hand painting these faces, but um, you'll get to see Geralt. See, Natalia here is posting that she saw, she thinks, she says it's one of the best I've ever seen. I already own three Prime 1 statues so I can compare them. I spent like an oh, hour analyzing you. the statue uh, on Gamescom. Thank you. And uh, on, actually, for Gamescom, if you go on, again on the group, I did, a, did, I do, I did a live stream where I did a booth tour. So you can actually check out all the statues there. And I did spend a lot of time filming uh, The Witcher. And uh, we're also going to be shooting a behind the scenes. Uh, we're also going to be putting up a behind the scenes. It's like a day at Gamescom. So basically what we did is I took the camera with me on Sunday and literally starts off leaving the hotel room. And it's sort of like a day at Gamescom. And to be honest with you, it starts off strong, but then because it becomes so busy on Sunday, I kind of forgot about the camera. And then the next thing you know, it's us dead. <laughs> that, that's the last day of five days, right? Yeah, so. yeah. So anyway, in there will be a booth tour. It's shot in 4K. It is super detailed. Uh, so you guys can really check out all the statues that are there. So we've got all the new prototypes are there. So the Edward, uh, Pontiff Sullivan, all that good stuff. So they're all there. 
We've had a really busy summer, especially you with all the travel. We've had bit. an epic summer. Shows are back, right? Yeah. Shows are back, so uh, it's been super. Uh, it's super busy. So we started off the the season with Montreal Comic Con. That was fun. That was the one that I got to attend, and uh, we had a lot of fun at that one. We had a live stream there, which we thought was super chaotic, but then watching it back, it was it was uh, okay. Yeah, it was, it was good. It was okay. So we should do that next year as well. Now, for those of you that didn't follow um, Montreal, our Montreal Comic Con like videos and stuff that we were kind of doing live, or I would record like 60 seconds and we'd upload it. So Montreal Comic Con was cool because it's here in Montreal, so all the staff were able to attend. So we had a ton of people showing up, and uh, so it was, it was great. And we had the most amazing experience, of course, with our T1000. So if you, if you didn't watch me freaking out about this, having a meltdown about it, uh, Robert Patrick was at the show, was at Comic-Con signing autographs, and he had a panel on the last day. So what was happening was, uh, and of course Robert Patrick is the actor that plays the T-1000, and who I love, and I love him in Sons of Anarchy, and in all the other shows that he does, he's just like the ultimate badass. And uh, so anyway, we're at the show, and what happens is, he, has, he knows we're there, and he knows about the statue, he loves it. But we haven't shown it to him in person yet. So what's happening is, is people are going to his like signing area and he's signing autographs. And I guess the conversation began where he was talking about this. He's like, yeah, these, there's guys here from Pure Arts. They have a statue of me. Go check it out. And he started telling people to come to our booth and mm. tell us to bring the statue to him so he could check it out. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> so Nico is like, no, we, we should bring it. I'm like, no, no, leave the guy alone. So Nico convinced me to go and bring it. So we literally just grabbed it off the podium and we started making our way over to the signing area. And now he's got a queue of people that have paid to meet him, right? To get to sign stuff and say hi and, and whatever. He literally sees us and he just like stops everyone. He's like, come over here. And on his desk, he had like cards and pictures that he was signing. He just takes his arm and <laughs> swipes it all off the desk. And he's like, right here. So we put it down and we had an amazing conversation with, with him. And what a wonderful, wonderful man. He's just such a nice guy. And um, so eventually, like I can kind of sense the people that have paid are like, who are these people yeah. and why did they just butt in front of us? And like he just, you know, when you meet actors, sometimes you, you ask questions and you get like a two word answer. Not Mr. Patrick. You just one question and he is gone. He Two hours, he'll get you into it. And uh, so anyway, we're like, okay. So finally we say, listen, we'll, um, we're going to see you tomorrow at his panel. And he invited us to come and bring the statues and put them on stage during his panel. And we're freaking out. We're like, okay, this is like crazy. So we said our goodbyes and we said, all right, well, we'll, we'll see you tomorrow at the panel. So that's, that was that. Already I'm, I'm freaking out about this. And then the day of the panel comes and the organizers from uh, Montreal Comic Con come to us and are like, yeah, look, we want to we want to set up the, the, the things on the pedestals and we want to put the T-1000s next to them, blah, blah, blah. We're like, okay, cool. So we grabbed them and we also grabbed two pedestals. This is hilarious. We're walking around with like our big pedestals and stuff. So we go over to the uh, where the panel is and it's the biggest panel of the show. There's like a seating for 3,000 people or something like that. And uh, so we start setting it up and, you know, Robert Patrick hasn't arrived yet, right? He's still doing his thing. And so we're setting it all up, we're getting it all ready, and they're like, okay, so Robert Patrick's gonna come here and he's gonna do this, and if you guys want, and I'm like, listen, I have my badge, I'm like, can I get him to sign our badge, and we'd love him to sign the statues if that's possible. Oh yeah, don't worry about it, we'll figure it out. Perfect. So we're waiting, and then uh, we're waiting backstage, and we were told we get to meet Robert Patrick and we could ask him to sign our, our things. <coughs> so Robert Patrick comes, and not only does he greet us, he's like, hey, it's Dan from Pure Arts, how's it going, da 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 And he's like, listen, this is what we're gonna do. I'm gonna go up on stage, and he's literally just about to go up on stage. People are already packed in the hall, and he's like, uh, listen, we're gonna, I'm gonna go up on stage, and the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna introduce you guys to the crowd, and we're gonna show off your statues. And I'm like, yeah, you're, 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 you're gonna do what? <laughs> and he's like, yeah, yeah, don't worry, it'll be great. Dan, and Ryan was there as well, and he's like, you're Ryan, right? Yeah, I'm Ryan. Okay, Dan and Ryan, got it. And he just walks off, he goes up to the crowd. And I'm like, uh, what's going on? I, uh, my, I'm getting, my hairs are raising just thinking about it. Uh, my heart's going to, my adrenaline is pumping. And then the, the, the stage manager hands me a mic and she's like, okay, it's already on. You just have to start talking. And I'm like, what, talk about what? <laughs> and then all you hear is, so everybody welcome Dan and Ryan from Pure Arts. And everybody starts, and she's like, go, go. And so here we out, I'll go out on the middle of the stage with Robert Patrick and he does a full on interview with us. He asks us, 
who we are, where we're from, how did we make the statue? Just, it was just so cool. And I was, I was actually kind of overwhelmed by how generous he was with his time to, to sort of promote us and, and talk about the product and, and just like do this really cool interview with us. It was just wild. And then like, I don't know, after five, 10 minutes, he's like, all right, you're done. Get the hell off the stage. And that's it. And then we left. And it was, I mean, I walked off of that and I was like overwhelmed and it was just the it's coolest, your rock coolest star thing. moment. It was my rock star moment. Yeah. Maybe so, the first of many. I'm going to sign autographs, guys. I have touched <laughs> Robert Patrick's hand. So, you know, next time you see me, if you want to ask for an autograph, I understand. We have a star in the house, folks. Yeah. <laughs> and then we took pictures with him backstage when he was done. And I mean, it was the coolest thing that has ever happened to me at a show. Uh, so, yeah, I am forever loyal to Robert Patrick now. Screw Arnie. Sorry, I'm on Team Robert. <laughs> Team T-1000 No, he's going to put that T-1000 in his motorcycle shop, isn't he? Right. So Robert Patrick actually owns one of the biggest Harley dealerships in, uh, in all the U.S. And it's in Santa Clarita, California. And it's so funny because he kept making this joke about Santa Clarita. He's like, so the dealership is in Santa Clarita. Guess what we call the dealership? Harley Davidson, Santa Clarita. And everybody started laughing. And then he plugged it. He did that like about three times. He plugged the Harley dealership. And at some point, so people got up to leave. I guess they, he's like, I guess I mentioned the Harley store too many times. Like, it, was, it was quite funny. So yeah, he has in this Harley Davidson dealership, he has like a whole section where he has all of his stuff from movies. He's got like awards and props and all that sort of thing. And he's going to get two T-1000s to put in the shop. So it's just... Super, when super are we cool. going to do a vlog road trip to that shop? That's what I'm so, wondering. Wouldn't that be fun? At San Diego Comic-Con, I wanted to go. Mm -hmm. I was all primed and ready to go. It's not that far away from Comic-Con, except for the whole traffic thing. It was five hours to go one oh, way. God. So that kind of forgot about it. But we should do a road trip. We'll do a Harley road trip where we'll just have like pure art statues strapped to the motorcycle and we see if we can make it all the way to California in one piece. Go there and wait till he has the statues in the shop and then we can yeah. go and check them out. So that is the Robert Patrick story. Uh, wow. He's just an amazing guy. And I mean, if you, if you guys want to follow him, he's, he's, he's still all about the movie industry. Uh, follow him on social media. He's really, really cool. And one of the things, just really quick, one of the things that I loved about him is he loves to talk about the unsung heroes of the movie industry, which I thought was really cool. So he doesn't really, he does talk about some of the stuff, like some of the big actors and, and, and directors that he's worked with, but he loves to talk about, like for example, the, the guy who came up with the special effect of the liquid Terminator, which was actually used in the abyss uh, first, and he was impressed that I knew that. I kind of revealed my age on that one. Um, so he, he talks about you know, that guy that almost nobody knows his name. Uh, and he talks about like camera, cameramen that he's worked with. Like he just loves to talk about the people that are kind of behind the scenes that make the actual movies happen, which is really cool. I, lo I love that about him. Just super good guy. Super good guy. All right, that's it. And that's we had a panel as well, but it, it felt a little bit overshadowed by the we did. coolness <laughs> of Robert Patrick. Um, but we did have a panel and we talked about the whole process of going from an idea to a collectible. Why is that all online yet? Well, because we overwork our video editor, I think. <laughs> but <laughs> oh, Brian. <laughs> I keep asking him, is it going to be next? But then we have another launch. And we're going to put that on YouTube because it is interesting and a little bit timeless. Because what was it called? It was... Uh, from Concept to Collectible. From Concept to Collectible, that's it. So and we, we go through behind the scenes, all the magic that happens. Yeah. All the people, all the work, all the concept art that goes into one I remember there was one guy very insistent. He asked like five questions in a row. I think he was trying to steal their company secrets. Yeah, story. I think he pretty much wants to start his own company. <laughs> yeah, yeah, or he's going to come work here. I don't know. Either way. It so that'll cool. be online eventually. Of course, I'll let you know. I'll post to all our social media when that happens. <laughs> they want to know about the skull. Yeah, what's so the deal? So no, it's not available. And of course, this is, uh, this was, I, I found out. So this is from the uh, son of Bayek when he died. And Bayek took this as a memento. Um, I actually don't know where this came from, to be honest with you. It's just Did in the it office. come with? No, it doesn't come with Bayek. Oh. I don't know where it came from. But no, it is not something that we're, we're releasing. It's we a collector pro for Origin. It's a what, sorry? Collector. It's a collector what? From Origin. From Origin? Yeah. So it's a collector piece? Yeah. Oh, okay. it's a collector piece from Origins. There we go. Who sold it? Uh, yeah. no, it's it was directly from Ubisoft. From UB, yeah. Okay, it was directly from Ubisoft. It must have been a while ago. How long ago was this? Like. Four or five years ago. Sorry, guys, you missed out. <laughs> I'll sell this one to the lucky winner of whoever gives me $1,000. And it's been touched by the hand that touched Robert Patrick. It's been touched by the hand that touched Robert Patrick. That's correct. 
<laughs> let's uh, put it on eBay. <laughs> All right, so let's see what else is going on here. Um, I just want to see a pre-order Lady D. Unfortunately, not the deluxe as I missed it. Join the wait list. If you ordered Lady D um, and you've got the regular version, go on the wait list for the exclusive edition. I mean, at this point, is the, I don't know, is the wait list even still open? The wait list is open. Mm. There's a lot of people on the wait list. I can't guarantee anything, but hey, you never know. Basically, what we do is when, <clears throat> when something sells out, we open up a wait list and you can join the wait list. What we do is when something becomes available, we contact people in order of when they join the wait list and you have like a week to pay. If you don't pay, we will send you the invoice manually. If you don't respond or you don't pay within a week, we move to the next person on the wait list. So you never know, you have a chance. Uh, let's see. Anything we can uh, reveal about upcoming league statues? Not right now, but there will be stuff coming, that's for sure. So that was uh, Montreal Comic Con. And then, then uh, you got whisked away. Whisked away to San Diego Comic Con, How which was a dream come true. So for me, I've wanted to go to San Diego Comic Con for like 20 years. It was like a dream come true to finally go to the mecca of pop culture collecting. And all I did was stay at our booth and answer questions and didn't get to see a dang thing. <laughs> Literally didn't, didn't see anything. So uh, we had the, it's fun. So when I first started collecting, my dream was to go to San Diego Comic-Con and check out the Sideshow booth. Because the Sideshow booth, since they've been going and became a big company, they're like the king of the booths of San Diego Comic-Con. So it was always my dream to go and see. And fast forward to now, and I actually got to work at the Sideshow booth showing off our PRNs collectibles. So how cool was that? So we did, we shared a space. So Prime One, um, Pure Arts got to share space with, uh, with Sideshow. At SDCC, it was really, really cool. It wasn't really a sales event, so we weren't really there to sell. Like we had no inventory, we, there was no room for anything. Uh, we just had two kind of like really big pedestal setups where we had all of our latest prototypes and it was really cool to just introduce people to it. But the problem also was there was so many people. It was so packed that I just felt like I was in the way the entire time. Because I'm trying to talk to people, but I'm like, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. And of course, everyone's a vlogger, right? Everyone's like a, everyone's a YouTuber. So there's like people that are doing it. Or you got the high-end YouTubers where they have their own camera and mic person. That was pretty impressive. How do they navigate the crowds? I don't know. They got like they got like the huge boom mic. So there's like wow. somebody standing back with like a giant telescopic holder and stuff, and they're all walking around like looking very important. So yeah, so I would automatically <laughs> defer to them. I'm like, sorry. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, San Diego Comic Con was was really cool. It was a great opportunity to meet a lot of uh, collectors in the U.S. So that was cool. A lot of people came to come, like specifically came to come and check us out. And you know what I liked? We were the only company that were at Sideshow that we did not put, and Prime One actually, I lied, Prime One too. We didn't put display cases over our stuff. We just had them sitting on pedestals. And people were like, some people were like, you know, you should put them, you should cover them to protect them. I'm like, no, because one of the cool things is A, you can shoot photos of them and not get reflections. You can take really nice pics. But the other thing that was cool is that I would like to be able to pick stuff up and like let people hold things. So I'd be like, here, check out the articulation on this, or here you can feel the Batman mask and stuff. So that was cool. So I like being able to like, you know, I don't want people touching stuff unless like I pick it up and I'm like, you can touch here. <laughs> you know? For two seconds. For two seconds, and then that's enough. Okay, okay, you're done, you're done. And also visually, even from my perspective of watching the videos and seeing the photos, it made us stand out because everything else had the glass cases and yeah. here we are. But um, it, it was cool, but I mean, wow. Um, there were so many great statues and so many other vendors out there like making just amazing stuff. It was so cool. Um, I even freaked out. I got to see uh, HCG has like a whole new line of Predator stuff coming out. So for those of you that oh. know I love Predator, woo, I was in heaven. <laughs> Heaven. Was your was, visa calling out to you? Oh God, it was Spider very Man. hard. It was. <laughs> but then, but then, like the geek of the, the, the like the predator fanboy of me came, started coming in. I'm like, oh, the dreads aren't technically accurate. Uh, the plasma cannon has an error right there. That's not what it looks like. Uh, I started like nitpicking. You're that it. guy. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm that guy. <laughs> so like, yeah, when people start criticizing our statues, like I get it because I do the exact same thing when it comes to predator and aliens. I will, I will pick it apart until I convince myself I don't need it anymore. And then two years later, it's sold out, and it's double the price on eBay, and I decide I need wow. it. That's, that's the history of my life. Uh, are you still making statues for Sideshow? So, yeah, we still manufacture for Sideshow, absolutely. And the recap video from San Diego Comic-Con is on YouTube, if you haven't seen it yet. Yeah, go and check it out. I, we always try and do little recap videos, um, but yeah, the Gamescom one will be longer. But we'll, oh, sorry, we'll it's San Diego Comic-Con. Yeah. yeah. Uh, let's see, order a liquor bust through Big Bad Toy Store, and the rock portion won't support the weight. 
He'll be, yep, yeah, reach out to them. They should be able to help you out. Um, are we still making guests? More Resident Evil or Cyberpunk statues in the future? Nemesis, maybe. <laughs> so. No comment. There's definitely more. Okay, wait. No, we can, we can, we can make some okay. comments. Yeah. Uh, definitely there's going to be more Resident Evil stuff coming out. I mean, that's, mm -hmm. that's a no-brainer uh, mm -hmm. for sure. And there is more Cyberpunk. So there will be another Cyberpunk resin figure, like one quarter scale to go with Johnny Silverhand. There is something coming out. That'll be coming out this year, I hope. Um, Nemesis. Again, Nemesis is like the twins. I hear you guys on the Nemesis. I have taken the Nemesis concept and request and I have given it to the owner of the company. I cannot get any higher than that. I was, and I literally told them, guys, make this. It's a no-brainer. So I've done everything I can and for And he Nemesis. didn't shut it down. He didn't shut he down He didn't shut it idea. down. Actually, he said you're absolutely right. Yeah. But like the problem is, is that our schedule is like already booked for so far in the future. Like even if I, I get a concept that I love and that we're like, yeah, we're going to do this, you won't see it for like a couple of years. But Nemesis is definitely, I think, is a great decision and would be an awesome piece. We're going to do first gen Nemesis, right? First gen. So yeah, that's, that's, that's definitely one. Uh, let me see. Yay, more cyberpunk. All right, cool. I think that's it for the questions for now. Okay. What's, who's next? Uh, Gamescom. Gamescom. All right, so San Diego Comic-Con was over. Um, oh my goodness, breaking down the booth for, for Comic-Con. Oh my lord. So we actually stayed to help Sideshow like tear stuff down, but we also had to take all our stuff apart because we have to take it all apart and re-bubble wrap it, all our prototypes and everything. And it takes forever, right? Because they don't go, not all of them have nice little clamshells like you have that get to fit everything. You actually have to bubble wrap each little piece like Cassandra. Poor Cassandra has been beaten to death. That poor statue has been glue. Yeah. There's more super glue on that than there is resin for sure at this point. So anyway, we reboxed everything up and right away we had to ship it to Europe for Gamescom because Gamescom was like a, a month later. So you had to get all that going. And then Gamescom came around. Now, for those of you that don't know about Gamescom, Gamescom, and I, and I keep trying to tell people how big Gamescom is just to give them an idea because we're used to kind of like the North American um, expos and stuff. like. It's five times the size of San Diego Comic-Con. And I think in North America, we all regard as Comic-Con as being this monster of a show. It's basically imagine um, 11 halls the size of Comic-Con, and it's, that's, that's Gamescom. It, uh, was it Comic-Con was hundred and like 120,000 or 140,000 people. Gamescom is 370,000 people. Wow. It's insane. Uh, the, the hallways just getting to the different halls are the size of an expo hall. Like, it's just insane. So it's a huge, huge, huge venue. It's, you get lost super easy. Like, if you've never been there before, you get so turned around. Because not only the halls are often double, uh, double levels. So they have an upstairs and a downstairs as well, just to add to the confusion. Oh and there are <laughs> courtyards with food courts in the middle of it. It's just... It's insane. If you've ever seen, it's the Colon Mess, it's called, and it's in Cologne, Germany. It's, it's, it's giant. Anyway, so Gamescom. It's also five days. It's the longest expo that I, that I do. It's five days of expo fun. Um, and this one, Gamescom is obviously for the gaming industry, but it's still full-on merchandise, uh, cosplayers, the whole nine yards. And that show is, was exhausting, but it was so amazing to meet uh, so many of you, I, I would say that's the most amount of people that came up and said like, hey Dan, I saw you from the videos or I talked to you on the Facebook group. Like some people I completely recognized and it was just, it was really, really awesome. We felt really welcome. And also at the same time, we met a ton of people that said like, I've, I've never heard of, of Pure Arts before, which we don't really see too much of at North American shows. Like everyone pretty much knows us, but it was the first time that people got to see us at Gamescom. And a lot of people were also like, uh, like, wow, your stuff is so different. Because a lot of people were kind of selling the same things, like beanies and, and, and stuff like that. And then we came out of nowhere with like these giant resin statues. People were like freaking Ooh, out. We're expanding our reach It was the world. Our booth was way too small, way too small. So we kind of, we, we didn't book it too last minute. It was just, it was my fault. I basically, I looked at the floor plan when everything was ready. I had the floor plan. Like, everything was booked, everything's ready to go. I'm looking at my floor plan. I'm laying out where my pedestals are going to go. And I'm like, oh my gosh, we do not have any room. So I called Gamescom. I tried to fix it and it was impossible. There was no more room. So we had this tiny, just cram it, in it there. was a five <laughs> meter by four meter booth. It was, Yikes. it was rough. And we get there. So when we get there to set up on the setup day, 
which was the Tuesday, because it's, it's Wednesday to Sunday. We get there on Tuesday, and there are mountains of skids. Like, we had so much product, and we're like, how are we gonna get this inside the booth? This is impossible. So we did what we could. We were stacking stuff everywhere, and we rented a huge cube van, and we just stuffed the van to the door with all the extra inventory. We just, like, left it in the parking lot, and we'd take stuff. It was wild. But you guys were so enthusiastic. We actually even brought some big stuff. We, we, we brought a liquor. We brought a bunch of Terminators, T-800s that we had left in stock um, that one of, our, one of our other employees had. And everything sold. It was, a, like, a really, really good show. And you guys loved the statues. We had hundreds of cosplayers taking photos. We had bloggers, vloggers, media. Can we cosplay? Yes. Actually, right? Okay, Can so this is a big deal. Arrived at the booth. She did. She did, and she was very, very sweet. You got to meet her. Yeah, we got. Yay. I got to meet her. I saw the selfies only. <laughs> yeah, and those. Yeah, that's it. Well, we. Uh, I got to meet her. She loved Monster Hunter. She loved Puke Puke. Um, and there were several other like cosplay. But it's so funny because. Cosplay, I guess it's the same in North America. It's just, I don't know why, but at Gamescom, I interacted with the cosplayers a lot more. Mm -hmm. Because, uh, like, uh, Patrick, and uh, who came with Edward, he was dressed as Edward. Oh, my goodness, it was so good. Like, yeah. a lot of Assassin's Creed cosplayers, tons of them. It was, like, Nirvana for, for cosplayers. Um, they actually have, like, business cards. So you're like, okay, because uh, I wanted to tag people on the photos, and I'd be like, can I have, what's your Instagram? And I'm ready to type it out, and they're like, pew, and they got a business card, or they, like it's on their backpack, take a photo of the backpack, so they were Smart. really well prepared. So yeah, it was And this was starting, cool. like you, from my time, the show was starting at 4 a.m. So I would try to wake up as early as possible to help on social media while you guys were at the show. I'd wake up at 6 a.m. and my inbox would just be like, cosplayer, cosplayer, cosplayer. I'm like, ooh, just oh, I was so sending, many so, yeah. photos. No, I would send every <laughs> cosplayer that came to our booth, I'd yeah. take a photo and I'd send it to Melissa. And oh, I, We had a group chat and I'd, I'd put the tags and there was just so many. So I was waking so up many. to cosplay for five days. You can go on our Instagram and see all the photos. I tried to post all the photos that we have. Yeah, everything, yeah, there. it should be all there. Yeah. So yeah, it was uh, it was amazing, but it was exhausting. It was exhausting. You know, I, I used to be in more a B two B role before, where a lot of the meetings, like you would you would meet at these shows from like ten a.m. till five, and all the meetings are sitting down. This is like twelve hours nonstop standing and talking. It is it's rough. There's no partying afterwards. It's literally <laughs> go to the hotel. Uh, you get like Uber Eats and then you just die. Pass out. <laughs> Until the alarm. Not wakes even you fall asleep, but pass out. Just yeah. you pass out. <laughs> like Nico, actually, Nicholas, who was there, he does, he's our B2B partner. Uh, he does like, uh, he does B2B sales for us. And uh, he actually fell asleep on his laptop like twice. Aww. Like he showed up afterwards, like to dinner, and like the, the keyboard was printed on his cheek. It was hilarious. He was, yeah, he was exhausted. So Gamescom was super cool. It, the biggest show ever. We cannot wait to go back, uh, but we're gonna have like three times the booth space. It's gonna be it's gonna be way bigger. Well, uh, Laurence, who's on our team, and I had a little moment. Pure Arts wasn't at this show. Yeah, I'm taking over now. You take over. This is all yours <laughs> for sure. <laughs> Pure Arts wasn't at this show, but we decided we would go to Otakuton, which is here in Montreal, and it's a celebration of Japanese culture and manga and anime. And uh, so we went. We thought it would be relevant to Pure Arts lore to go as Lady D. And her daughter Bella. And that was so fun. I am an amateur wannabe cosplayer. I don't make my own outfits. I bought it online. I got the wig. But Laurence is the They're real They're showing the photo deal. of Laurence. Yes. Laurence she is, is like, so good. She is a true cosplayer. She made that hat by hand. Actually, I should get her to bring it over here. I think it's in the office. But anyway, this was, uh, this was us hat. at the show. Come over here and wear your hat at a jaunty angle. So she she did her own makeup. She styled the wig. You wear it. Come she on, get over here. She made the hat. It was just incredible. I'm not, are you going to be shy? Give me the hat. All right, fine. Give me the hat. I'm not wearing it, though. I don't want to mess up my hair. My, Here we go. Here's my the hat. Oh, my goodness, wow. it's heavy. There's the yeah, hat. Look at that. Look at this thing. Handmade. She's going to put a little tutorial on her Instagram. And actually, I have her Instagram. What is it? There? I don't want to mess up your hair. There you go. I'm going to get yelled at. <laughs> look at that, man. Look at the size of this Amazing. thing. Amazing. So you can see more photos of our day there on our uh, cosplay Instagram. Oh, I'm just kidding. Well, mine's a Pure Arts Instagram. I'm Melissa at underscore Pure Arts. We just plug in your Instagram yeah, as well. Yeah, because they're fun. We've got tons of cosplay on there. And the last <coughs> is at Doi de Fe, which is D-O-I-G-T-S-D-E-F-E. 
E E E. This I think photo it's on the is screen crazy. Good. Yeah, it's on the okay, screen there, so you can check out more of her cosplay. Oh, and she put her cos plans. I like that word. That's new to me cos today. Plans? Cos plans for the future. So her latest post, she has her upcoming cosplay. Okay, wait. I mean. Before before Brian takes this photo away. Yeah. Look at look at this guy. <laughs> okay, he is legit shying away from you. He's totally he's creeped like, out. <laughs> he's he was freaking out right there. He was definitely freaking out. He's You're like, just like a little in. Too into this Bella. There, look moment. at him. Look at him. He's like, even his face, he's like, oh <laughs> God, get this person away from me. Yeah. It's basically like me when you come into the office and I'm at my desk. Exactly. Like, oh, God. That day, too, it was one of the hottest days in Montreal. I swear. It was so humid. It was steamy. So Laurence and I got ready here in the Pure Arts studio and we walked just five minutes down. And even the walk there was cooler than being inside it was sweaty which worked for my costume because i'm covered in blood and bella's kind of gross she's dirty she's got a lot of blood on her so it was all kind of dripping down with the sweat which kind of worked for the costume but eventually it all wore away and it just looked like i had a sunburn because of it anyway <laughs> oh, <they're right. laughs> i heard i heard that laurel's had maybe a couple of uh, resident <gasps> evil fans uh, in pursuit M mega fans yeah yeah in hot pursuit yeah, they they wanted Mommy D, Mommy, Mommy D. D's attention, yeah. big time. <laughs> so we had a blast. Of course, oh. right away we're like, what's next? So that was a little adventure for some Pure Arts staff. Good stuff. Yeah. yeah, that was good. I'm glad you guys had a good time. <laughs> I'm sorry it was a billion degrees outside. <laughs> it was fine. You just get in the moment, right? And you're just like wrapped up in the character. And, it was very cool. Yeah. Well, I didn't get to see it, but when I saw the photos, I was like, whoa, that is so good. Um, two comments. Somebody asked, will we do an Edward unboxing? Yes. Mm. So uh, they were a little late giving us our production sample for some reason. I don't know why, but we, I did make sure I got it ordered. So uh, it's actually on its way. It's already shipped. So I'm hoping that we can do the film, the unboxing <laughs> next week. Right? Yeah, mm. let's do a bunch of unboxings next week. We have a bunch of stuff can. we want to unbox. We got Edward going to unbox, Dragonborn. Uh, there's a bunch of stuff. Mm -hmm. So that will be on its way soon. And... Um, Greetings from Hungary. He is suggesting, this is Peter, that we should do a Crow Eric Draven. And yes, Ooh, yes. I agree a billion percent. We yes. don't have a license, but, and I know like there's been a lot of Crow statues that have been done. I would love, I actually had the original 18 inch NECA Crow uh, articulated figure in my, in my collection. It was so good. I, I love the Crow. I, I saw the Crow in theater in theaters and I remember it being super weird like uh, the person I was on a date and my date didn't like it because it was like dark so they just spent the entire time like blah 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 in my ear like criticizing it and I was like I didn't say anything but I loved it so literally like two days later I went to go see it by myself <laughs> and I never did go back on a date with that person well how could you she doesn't right? like the she doesn't crow, like the crow. that's very like, revealing of character is if that you don't gasoline like the crow. I smell <laughs> such a good movie such a good movie all right Next up, uh, Fan Expo. We did, uh, well, we yeah. had some representation at Fan Expo. That was cool. At the Ubisoft booth, we had a lot of our animus statues there. Were there six, I believe? There were six of our animus statues on display, and people loved them. The reception online was And great. Fan Expo, by the way, was in Toronto. Yes. Toronto. Here Toronto. in Canada, yep. our Fan Expo. And then, okay, so then Gamescom was done, mm -hmm. and a week later, we had DesignerCon UK. Now, DesignerCon UK is uh, more for designer toys, so like all of our Master Nine Eye stuff. It's a very small show. It was literally like it's the first. Is it the first one ever? Agnes, was Decon the first? Was that the first? The second one. That's our second one ever. Second one ever. Very very small show, but it was a cool opportunity to show off our M9E to, to some people. Uh, we also had uh, the Witcher were there. The statues were there as well. Uh, so we've got to check that out and uh, basically uh, well, Vivi was there as well. So everybody that was there for Vivi got to see our stuff as well. So that was cool, but very small show. Um, so hopefully uh, as the years go by, that thing will get bigger. It's, it's definitely smaller than the Anaheim show. That's for sure. Uh, the Anaheim design. It's like the wannabe little brother. It's like, like we'll yeah, be Anaheim little, one day. Yeah. <laughs> one day. A big it could boy. happen. Keep eating your vegetables. It is London after all. All right. Future shows. So, okay, so here, I'm going to blow up your thing right oh, now. Oh, blow I'm, it I'm up. I'm going to blow it up. Do okay. it. I'm sorry, I'm blowing up your schedule. So, uh, right here on future shows, if we had a cameraman, we'd zoom in. Uh, it says, Designer Con LA in November. So, that's up in the air. Oh. That's up in the air. I can't say anything right now, though, but, like, 
We'll I'm see. I'm so curious. We'll see, but we're maybe we're gonna do something else. Maybe. Ah, this. Ah, I should. Oh said my god! As I, soon as we go offline, I'm gonna yeah. be like, what? <laughs> What's that? Well, happening? we're trying. Do, do I say anything? Should I say something? Guys, should I say something? I feel so out of the loop. Okay. We're, we're trying, we're gonna see, okay guys? Cause so far it's not working out, but we're gonna try. We are doing our very best to see if we can squeeze, we can shoehorn our booth into New York Comic Con, which is in, in exactly one month. So there's a couple of challenges. One, we decided, like it would replace designer cons cause we've already gone to California, right? So it'd be nice to do an East Coast thing. So we're trying to do New York Comic Con so we can be on the East Coast. But the problem is it's like literally a month, nothing is planned, they have no space, we're trying. And we have like a, a huge booth, right? So we're gonna, we're gonna see, we're gonna, we're gonna do our best and maybe it will replace, but we'll see. Nothing, nothing written in stone. Um, that's cool. So that's where that's at. Okay. So just enough information to make it useless. Jeez, I'm so n nosy at work and ha the fact that I didn't know that. It's, <laughs> it's actually Agnes and I, it's our secret project. Oh, okay. I'm not gonna lie. I'm, I, I might be in trouble for mentioning this whatsoever, but we'll see. So, decon is not written in stone. All right, You then. can go with the rest now. Well, geez. <laughs> Sorry. But then... We're... I'm just over here drinking my water. <laughs> Drink your vodka. We're going to be in Singapore. The team won't be there, but our collectibles will be in Singapore at the Singapore Comic Con, December 10th to 11th. We're going to be at the Collector's Arc booth. So they're a distributor in Singapore, and um, they are going to show a few different brands at the show. We're very excited. I kind of want to just jump just... on a plane and go there, and <laughs> it'd be so fun. What what uh, cosplay should I do there if I just go renegade? I don't know. I'll let do, the do, people decide. Let the people decide. Guys, yeah. what do you want her to cosplay as? Yeah. So we're going to keep an eye on the chat here. Um, Oh, that was another thing too, by the way, for New York Comic Con. I actually just, re Agnes doesn't even know this part. I'm actually on vacation that weekend. Don't do that to us. <laughs> so, well, no, hold on. So I could, I could come like the Friday, the, for the setup and like Friday, Saturday, but Saturday night I'd have to leave. So for those of you that want autographs from the hand that touch the hand of Robert Patrick, you would have to come on Friday or Saturday. Yeah. All right. Okay. Throwing curveballs online here. I'm serious, a mess. Robocop? You, you, you wanted to cosplay as Robocop? Robocop anytime? Oh, yeah. Oh, I think he just wants to know for doing oh, Robocop. as a collector. Oh, Jinx cosplay. Jinx Jeez. cosplay is out of control, by the way, at the shows. Uh, like, mm. wow. Probably, like, one of the number one cosplays this year. In there Montreal as well, right? In Montreal. Montreal yeah. and in Germany. You could literally just, in Germany, you could just hold up your phone and just randomly point it in a direction and take a photo, and you probably have some blue hair, for it's sure. It's a cute one. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's a good one. Okay, um, so that's it. Do we want to tease some future releases? Sure. What, what, how do you want to tease I them don't exactly? Know. <laughs> what do you want me to tease? Okay, so we do have some new. Oh, Where first do we of all, begin? There's so no, many. but really quick, I'm going to hijack your whole schedule okay. once again. So, guys, by the way, two statues are going to be shipping very, very soon from the factory uh, to our warehouses, okay? So, uh, the Soul Embrace statue, okay, uh, Siegfried, and uh, Pontiff Sullivan. I know you guys are dying for Pontiff. So Pontiff Sullivan and Siegfried, deliveries live on camera. Um, so yeah, those are gonna be shipping very, very soon. Like literally will be loaded on a container, I expect within the next two to three weeks. So those are all good. They will be arriving uh, before Christmas, of course. Um, so yeah, so those are good. Also, you guys might've seen the new photos of the new Pontiff prototype. Uh, that we took as of San Diego Comic-Con, where the swords are way brighter. Also, you might have noticed, if you saw those photos, the sword, um, the, uh, the great sword of judgment is, was blue. Um, we were gonna do it that way, so the, the sword is purple, it's supposed to be purple. When the lights are off, it's purple. But the light is so intense that when it would light up, it would come off as blue. So uh, we actually had to change it back. To, like we, we, we didn't do it purple because we just couldn't get it right. It looked weird. Well, we found a new way, so it will be corrected to purple. So the lights will still be bright, like in the new prototypes. That looks insane. But the Sword of Judgment will be purple. So it will be the right color. So yeah. Some anyway. tweaks on the pontiff. That's good. Yeah, we had to tweak the pontiff. So those are being boxed and finalized right now. And will be, like I said, will be loaded on the next uh, container as well as her. That's really quick. So That's in there awesome. will be Siegfried, 
pontiff and her. So there Get you go. ready, folks. Everybody should be super excited in the chat about that. <laughs> you better be excited. <laughs> Maybe some Robocop <laughs> statues. No, that is not what we wanted. <laughs> so yeah, so that's the deal there. Um, and yeah, Edward unboxing is coming soon. So there we go. Okay. Teases. Well, we have another product coming. Okay, it starts with Lord and ends with rings. <laughs> Lord inside the diamond rings. Yes. So we're going to yes. have another collectible in that line of Lord of the Rings. So can you guess? Yeah. So this is going to be super cool. Yeah. Super cool. So Lord of the Rings, we got a new helmet that's coming out. Um, continuing the line of the evil helmets. And I am extremely excited for this one because this is so cool. Now, it's been done before, but not pure art style. It's going to continue to have a, where the base is a, a city or a tower or something like that. Like, we're continuing that theme. It will not be Baradur from Sauron. It'll be different. It'll be a different one. And it looks so good. It's huge, and it looks amazing. Um... Yeah, so that'll be our next release. It's actually our next release, in fact. Yeah. So it will be at the end of September. So that will be our next release. Now, get ready for this one, because um, Sauron was a big release. There was a lot. Uh, the edition size is large, because uh, there was just a crazy amount of demand for it, because nobody's really done a, a good Sauron. This one here will be the exclusive edition, will be ultra limited. Like, it'll be very limited, like... 100, maybe 150, so get ready because that's going to go quick. And the exclusive edition item is really cool. So it's not, it's, uh, it's not going to be like a sketch or a lithograph or anything like that. It's going to be a physical piece made of resin. Uh, it's really, really cool. It's a very, very cool little item, so keep it. And if you that. ordered Sauron, oh, they're going to look so good side so by good side. They're going to look so good together, yep. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> Ryan's, Ryan's on here. I know, I know. <laughs> Shush. It's not that hard to guess. I don't think it'd be hard to guess. What'll be harder to guess? Well, you know, it won't be hard to guess. There will be another, because, right, there's a whole series of them. There's the third one that we're going to do uh, in the Lord of the Rings series, which will only be next year. I'm very excited because, as far as I know, nobody's done it before. So this is a, a helmet that has never been done before. As far as, like, maybe somebody's done, like, a statue of it, maybe? I don't know. But... This has never been done before in full size, so I'm super excited about that one. It's going to be sick. That'll be special. Um, League of Legends. What? 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 What are we teasing about? About LOL? I League of Legends. No. There's nothing to tease. No, that was a typo. That was a typo. Yeah, <laughs> uh, that was definitely a typo. <laughs> League of Legends. We're not doing anything like that. Yeah, there is a new piece. When, <laughs> when's that coming? That's. Uh, this now. I feel like I don't want to set people up. Like I don't want people to like think, I don't know, I'm trying to, I don't know how to express this. This is okay. going to be a very unique piece. It's probably not what you're thinking, but you're going to love it when you see it. Does that make sense? Yeah, and that's kind of our thing, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's going to be unexpected, but you're going to love it. We ignore what you want and just make what we want. Well, uh, uh. You want this. <laughs> um, yeah, so this is going to be a really cool piece. Um, it's not going to be in the high range of like the costs and stuff. I think it's going to be more of a, like a mid, I think. But uh, yeah, so this is going to be really, really cool. Uh, so that's coming out. Um, do we know when that's coming out? Like the prototype, okay, actually I do, I, I can kind of answer kinda, myself. Yeah. Well, the prototype is currently awaiting approval. So yes. as soon as it's approved, we'll get the prototype. And uh, so that might be like a, a November launch or October. That could be an October launch. Hoping for October yeah. might get pushed to November. Because so approval that's... sometimes takes a bit of time. People once are we... making guesses here. Yeah. <laughs> once we submit our designs, it's out of our hands. We have to wait for the licensor. Mortal Kombat statues. Somebody's asking about Mortal Kombat statues. I would love to do Mortal Kombat. So, yeah, we do not have a licensing agreement. We have produced stuff for them. We've manufactured stuff for them. But we do not have a licensing deal where we can uh, manufacture and produce and distribute for ourselves. Uh, is it a Witch King helmet? No clue. I mm -hmm. no uh, would love a Yone statue from League. Oh, yeah, I know. Zyra. Let's see. Do I convince you to make a Yone sculpture? Yeah. Sorry, guys. We'll see. We'll see. Um, Monster Hunter. Are we doing something for Monster Hunter already? You know, as soon as we 
launched Puke Puke, people were like, I want this, 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 this monster. We so they got, we, got, we, we, got, we got a laundry list for real. Yeah. <laughs> and the one we're doing next did pop up in those requests. So that's all And I this can one's going to be a, well, it, okay, literally will be a beast, but I mean, it'll be like a beast of a statue. A this biggin. Is a, this is a biggin. <laughs> Bergen. It's like when I go fishing. Bergen. Uh, yeah, so we got, there is another Monster Hunter statue coming. It's going to be huge. It's going to be a big one. It's going to be a very popular piece. I think you guys are going to love it. It looks really cool. That's all I can say. Yeah. DC. DC. Yeah. I'm very excited. You wouldn't be about talking about the prototype that's just right, right there, would you? there. <laughs> so, yes, we have the next Batman piece. Um, for those of you that saw all of our uh, footage and our pictures and all that, you should know that there were two silhouettes uh, next to the Batman mask, uh, the cowl that we launched. So one of those silhouetted items, the probably the most obvious, uh, is launching. It's coming. It's coming. I'm going to start hyperventilating. Is that okay? Yeah, I... it's <laughs> Melissa's favorite. Um, yeah, very however, the, pro the main issue is that our prototype arrived in less than stellar condition. So we're trying to figure out what we're going to do with that. <laughs> it uh, unfortunately, yeah, it didn't arrive in the pristine shape that we look for. So we may have to get a new one. We'll see. But yeah, so that, that, the next piece is coming soon. The next of three. The next of three. Yeah. Exactly. Once we have all three, we're going to have to clear some space in the... And it's cool because again, the material, for all of these different pieces that we're doing, we're trying to replicate the material so it feels like the actual movie prop, which is cool. And this will be sort of the same, the same thing. And there's a very interesting detail that we can't talk about it now, and I'm sure it's going to be, I guarantee you people are going to talk about this, but it'll be interesting. So it's, you know, the white parts mm -hmm. thing, thing, yeah, mm -hmm. it'll be interesting to talk about this because some people will think it needs to be one way, but the true replica is actually the way we did it. Yeah. So this will be if so that doesn't sound confusing enough, it'll make sense later. Clear as mud, my <laughs> friends. All right. Do we, uh, should we give away something? Everyone's been like yeah. patiently waiting. Should we you do You guys have been so good listening to us yap. All right. Let's... You want to give away the big, the, the gleam stuff? Yeah. Okay. Let's give away some big, juicy statues. Should we start with Jill Valentine? First, I need vodka, and then yeah. we're going to oh, yeah, do Jill? Do. All right. Cheers. Mm. Ah, that's good stuff. Jill has not finished production, so we're announcing the winners because the contest ended, but we won't be shipping either of these right now. We are still in the middle of production. Who won? Oh, okay. I don't know them. And Jill's face is being worked on, and um, yeah, our CEO, he said, you know, we've tried a few things, we've changed it, but it's not quite right, and why go with this change just for the sake of it. Why not make it perfect? So it is a little bit delayed because he's a perfectionist and that's why we love him. <laughs> and hate him sometimes too. <laughs> so he she's loves not to get everything yet. dialed in yeah. perfectly. And like sometimes it'll be like it'll be boxed up ready to go and he'll be like, mm, one more little thing. He's Bless an artist. Him. So we trust his eye. Exactly. Um, so she's not ready to ship but we are going to announce the winner and we will contact our winners by email. So no need to reach out in the chat or anything. We will find you. We're going to give this winner the choice whether to receive the classic version, which I think you're seeing on your screens right now, the classic version of Jill in her tube top, which is my choice of attire when I'm fighting zombies, for sure. Me too. Me too, absolutely. <laughs> or her star's uniform which was more of an exclusive item, more of a limited, edition, a limited yeah. edition item. So we're gonna let our winner choose which one. It's very generous of Yeah, you. I think it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of fun. So the winner of our Jill Valentine one quarter scale statue is Katrine Anderson. She lives in Germany. And we will contact you, Katrine, and see which one you prefer. And there was, I was just in Germany. Yeah. It's almost like Katrine like slipped me an envelope with some cash in it or something, right? <laughs> oh, that's I got how you, this Katrine. happened. <laughs> Good one, smart one. <laughs> and how come I don't get winners up? on mine? Where's my? Where, how do you, really have the <laughs> you have the cliff notes. <laughs> I got the cliff. Yeah, I've got the abridged version. I can't handle more than that. Like it's, this is my word limit. That's here. your bandwidth. So who's next? 
No, you do it. You, you, Brian you, you Fury, do really good. Brian Fury, who is also not ready, but his new face sculpt is ready. I'm sure you've seen that online. He looks great. I don't remember when we're. Brian Fury should be ready end of the year. Okay, end, end of the year, year which is yeah. going to come up faster than we think. That always happens around this time. It's, it's, like, like, it's end of the year, then it's the end of the year. It's like end of <laughs> next did, year. We how did that no, happen? It's not true. It'll be it, like the production should be finished by the end of the year. So then they'll be packed up and shipped in like January or whenever. We try and get out. We try and get out one batch just before Chinese New Year, because then when Chinese New Year hits oh, yeah. in Feb, everything shuts down for like a month. They yeah. try and say, "No, we're only off for a week." It's weird because you're off for like a month and a half. I don't know how that happens. Well, good luck getting a hold of us <laughs> yeah. for yeah. that month, right? <laughs> and there was almost 45k entries into that contest, and we have one winner. So the winner of our Brian Fury statue is Fernando <coughs> V. You coughed while I said his name. I'm sorry. I, the winner is, <laughs> <coughs> congratulations, cough. Fernando V. He lives in Spain. Fernando will contact you by email. So congratulations to Congrats, you. Congrats, Fernando. Um, and I forgot to mention, for the Jill contest, there was over 70K entries. Wow. And then for Brian, there was almost 45K entries. So that's a lot of people. So these winners are exceptionally lucky. And people are catching on to the whole Glean thing where mm -hmm. you can, you don't just enter your name, you can enter like, you can share it and do this and that. So we gave away an Orlog Deluxe at Gamescom, which was cool because a lot of people really saw that because it wasn't available right when we first sold it. You could see people were like eyeing it. I'm like, don't touch. <laughs> um, so we had people literally that would sit, that sat at the booth for like half an hour and they were completing all of the steps to get like 80 entries. They were, wow. they really wanted to win it. Really did. I wonder if one of those very diligent people won. I don't know. The only people that entered were the people at the, like, that came to see us, right? Yeah. Sorry, guys. It was in person only. And a deluxe, yeah. Those are sold out. So that was a yeah. hot commodity. It was. It was. It was cool. They were very, very, very pumped. So congrats to our winners. Yes. Well, we have, uh, we're going to have some more winners soon. We're, we're about gonna, to. We're you guys gonna... better put your thinking caps on. Yeah. Melissa doesn't just give stuff out. She makes you work. <laughs> For it. All right, so get ready. Everyone's like, everyone's opening Google. <laughs> <laughs> we're giving away Pure Arts t-shirts. Neither of us are where we, we went all stylish. Wearing, yeah, yeah. We went all stylish today. I went with my spooky season fishnet, and you've got your. I've uh, got cats and a gumball cats, machine. But we do have Pure Arts t-shirts, and they're very cool. They have. Can I gross out the audience right now? Yeah, do it. I'm gonna gross out the audience. So my tea. They asked me if I wore my. Tea. Oh God. <laughs> So mine are still in the uh, in the washing from Gamescom. Let's just say you can take them and stand them in the corner. They're a Ew. little, yeah, they're a little gnarly. That's stuff I didn't need to know, but now I know. I'll be. They needed to know this. It's Haunted. So we're giving away those T-shirts. No. Worn by Dan. <laughs> With the hand that touched Robert Patrick's head. So right. much DNA. No, we promise we're going to give you a nice, fresh. Fluffy, unworn, pure arts, unworn, pure arts Hopefully t shirt. Sealed. But you have to answer a couple of questions. <laughs> and, uh, I love these shows. And respond so in the chat. So everyone get ready, and we're going to watch the chat. See, I don't even have the trivia questions no, on No, because I hand wrote them. Oh, you hand oh, Again, yeah, okay. you get the abridged Cliff's notes. <laughs> That's okay. I'm just, I'm here for decoration. <laughs> Maybe it's a control thing. I'm just like, I have I, all the This is exactly secrets. what's happening. You had your own secrets Seeing today, this, right? too. <laughs> All of you are witnessing this. Uh, I'm going to give the first question. You're going to answer in the chat. And the first person that Dan sees with the correct I answer. I can sleep finally knowing about Dan's laundry. <laughs> right? <laughs> Love it. All right, sorry. <laughs> Maybe that'll be a trivia question for the next live stream. How long did Dan wait before he laundered his Gamescom t-shirts? Yeah, it's because I'm scared of it. I'm afraid it might fight back when I try and put it in the, in the thing, in the washing machine. All right, you ready? You might have to go online for this one. You might have to get Google out. Okay, so I'm going to watch the chat right here, I okay. guess. Right? This, is, this is like all the chats combined, correct? All right, so there's a bit of a delay. So she's going to ask the question, and then I'll sit here for a while looking like I'm spaced out, but it's yeah. actually because there's a weird delay. And there might be some people who have a bit of an advantage answering this, but that was, that's part of the plan, and you'll see why. So the first question, what is featured on our Twitch channel? What's the correct answer? Barbie? What? Yeah. All right, here we go. We're waiting. So if you go on our Twitch 
follow us and also take a look at our banner. And, uh, and what does the winner do? What does the winner need to do? The winner needs to say what. No, no, but how do they get their prize? They got to talk to. Yeah, uh, they have Agnes to put it there. in the chat. You got to put it in the oh, chat. Oh, yeah, and then. Um, yeah, can we find the people in the chat? I don't, we're going to. Well, we, we can, can find them. them. We'll stock you down. Okay. We'll and stock we, you And we will stock you. Oh, why is that to pen has won? Batman cowl. Boom. Oh, and. Uh, that Lord Rayless was like a millisecond afterwards. But why is that to Penn has won? Congrats. Yeah. Good stuff. So um, I, can you see them, where they're chatting from? You're good? I Great. OK, so we'll Agnes has got you. There you go. We'll stalk you. We'll get your size and uh, ship it off to you. How do you know it's actually them messaging you and not an imposter? They usually uh, have like, the same email up there. Oh, OK. All right. We're going to check on you. Yeah. Don't mess. All right, so. Our Twitch channel is still a baby. Very few followers, so I, I'm really hoping that some more people will follow. Lunch and with Dan will solve this problem. It's going to go through the roof. Everyone's going to want to watch you eat and I'm gonna, hear you dish. I'm going to do something scandalous. <laughs> like I'm getting like a fist fight with a random pedestrian on the first day and really pump those numbers. He's <laughs> doing it for the clicks. Doing it for the, doing it for the memes. <laughs> All right. What's Should next? we give an, away another T-shirt? How many T-shirts are we giving away today? Two. Just two? Yeah. It's kind of modest. Okay. Do we, hold on. Before we do the last one and everybody just pisses off. Yeah. Should, do we do we want to talk about one more? Do we have anything else to talk about? Well. Or does anybody um, have any questions before we yeah. go? Before we give away this T-shirt? Um, somebody wrote M9E. Oh, they were just randomly guessing at what mm. was. Ah, uh, he tried the old mm. guess routine. Now, whoever said that, you now you have to go to Twitch and follow us. I'm gonna. Yeah. I'm so, gonna stalk you and make sure you do. <laughs> we're punishing people <laughs> by making you follow our socials. <laughs> no, we're fun. We're really fun on there. We are fun. Uh, and especially in the Facebook, in the Somebody said group. the Twitch page actually aired out. Oh, that's not good. Oh, because there's so many people on it, right? Any word on a stand <laughs> for the Lady D switch out hands? Um, that's actually a good question. Um, in fact, t Tyler, I think it was you that suggested it, like in the very first chat. So I did tell them, uh, I, I did tell the production team, and I'm pretty sure I convinced them. So I think it's they're, they're going to do it. Although you're right, I should probably confirm that. But as far as I know, I, I did convince them because I told them like the clawed hand is super delicate. Like you know, you don't want to be throwing it in like a drawer or something. So yeah, I'm pretty sure that's going to happen. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> Any chance we can buy the shirts? Yes. So we are working on a plan to have shirts available where you can like add it to your order and we just like put it like in the top of the box or something. We're trying to figure something out for that because, yeah. It would it, be cool to have merch. It would be cool to have yeah. merch, but we don't want to bump up like shipping prices, right? Like it's cool mm. to add a bag, to, uh, to add a shirt, but you want to spend the extra 20 bucks of shipping for a shirt. So we're kind of working on how we can do that, if that makes sense. But yeah, we would definitely like to offer merch. That's for sure. Um, let's see. Email. Where'd you guys get the rug that you display under Pontiff? Mm. Get really want to get lot. one. That is a question yeah, we please. get quite a bit. And there is a certain person who refuses to go on camera named Laurence over there. I can't see. Is she even there? No, her chair's empty. Where'd she disappear to? She went in the basement to hide. So Laurence <laughs> actually made it. Uh, from scratch, mm. well, from, yeah, sure, from scratch. Um, so, but she's supposed to put together a tutorial. We said we'd do a tutorial, and the fact that Pontiff is shipping, this would be a good time. So we'll put together a tutorial on how she made that rug, and we'll put that online mm. for you guys, and cool. you guys can make your own. How's that? Is that cool? Yeah. We go with that? I'm excited That's for we'll the do. tutorial. Um, make the statues wear the merch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> you get a little quarter-scale t-shirt. You can wear it on your thumb. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's where that rug comes from. So we will put out, uh, we'll put out a tutorial. Now that somebody else asked, like now I really want to do it. Yeah, um, that's a great idea. Are you ever going to make big statue? Of, um, yeah, just like you guys. I, do. I really love the small statue as well. Um, yeah, you know what? Like the response seems to be really good. So it's entirely possible. Like we already have, this is what we explained earlier in the stream is that the, the next three um, animus statues, the quarter scale already, already planned like they're already booked scheduled being worked on um after that we'll see it's just there's so many pieces that are being demanded especially for assassin's creed you guys love assassin's creed mm. wow 
Um, there's just so many pieces that are being asked for. It's, uh, you know, I wish I could just do that and all of them are ready, but fortunately we got to do one at a time. It takes a while. Um, any word on art prints for the licensed purists produce? Not yet, but it's definitely on the radar. So I know art prints have been requested a few times. Um, definitely something on our radar. It's just if we do art prints, we want to make sure it's done well and done correctly. Quality prints with quality frames and all, you know, we don't want, we don't want to produce junk. Um, so finding the right people to make them in the amount that we want and the quality we want has been a challenge, but it's, it's definitely something being discussed. Uh, will there be more 1.8 scale uh, AC figures? Yeah, sure. I mean, this isn't the first one. We've already, uh, we've, we've manufactured tons of them. Um, so will we do more in the future? I think that's probably a... Let us know who you want to see. Us. Yeah, who do you want to see next? Guys, just a reminder on the Facebook group, the, the Pure Arts Collectors group, get on there. And that's where you make your suggestions. Post photos of what you want, suggestions. And the more people that jump on the bandwagon, the more people you get agreeing with you, the better chance that I'm going to see it and say, okay, yeah, this is something that I think will do well. And that goes off to the, owners, the owner and the management team, and uh, it could be made. So definitely, uh, like a great example is Nemesis. I keep seeing people asking for Nemesis. If Nemesis happens, I'm not even I'm not even making this up. If Nemesis happens, it's because you guys kept requesting it. So if that happens, it's because of the Pure Arts group, 100%. Yennefer. Oh. Knew Yennefer. He didn't even ask anything. He's just <laughs> Yennefer question mark. Um, yes. <laughs> yeah, I think that's probably that's a, a safe idea. bet. I mean, it's a great idea. It's not in the schedule, yeah. but it does seem like a logical thing to do for sure. Um, is there a catalog of previous releases to reference? Would love to have a list of all. Um, this is a tough one. The problem is, is that like our online catalog would be the website. So when something is sold out or retired, we don't remove it from the website. The problem is, is that none of the manufactured pieces are there. Um, and we don't really have an online catalog because we're not, we're not even allowed distributing. So that's why we don't have it on the site. I don't know if I'm assuming Ubisoft probably takes it off their site. You know what? I, I can't answer this question. I don't know. There isn't, as far as I know, there isn't one central, but I'm sure there is like a collection group out there where they just have everything cataloged. Like there's gotta be somebody that, that does it and has like some kind of catalog for everything that's ever been uh, made in that format. There has to be. I used to, I did it myself for Predator, uh, for Predator collectibles. So I'm sure somebody with a lot of time on their hands, like I used to, <laughs> has got something out there, but we don't have anything official. Just the stuff that we've sold off purist.com you can see all that all the time on, on the website. When will the Witcher be on the ETA update list? Um, if not this week, next week. I actually need to do the update and put a bunch of stuff on there. Oh, did everyone bookmark that page? Exactly. You tell them. Yeah. Tell them. Do it. <laughs> um, any chance of working with IO Interactive doing a Hitman statue? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I've seen I've I've seen a couple of companies do Hitman statues and they really didn't do well. I don't know if that's I don't know if that's a license we'd go after. I don't know if maybe the companies just didn't execute the Hitman well, but as far as I know it was just never a great seller. Um, yeah. So we'll see. we'll see. You know nothing's uh, no no license is off the table for the most part. It's just some are a lot more difficult than others. And is it worth going after those really difficult ones? That can be kind of the question sometimes. Um, if you're looking for a new idea for the Witcher statue, a Geralt with the fireplace would be great, just saying. That's from Natalia, of course. I agree with you. You mean, you don't, would this be the fireplace <laughs> with the bathtub? Or the bathtub. I, you know? Yeah, I'm surprised nobody's asked for the bathtub scene. Uh, let's see. I'm uh, one of those groups that don't remember the name of it. Definitely exists. See, there you go. So if you guys can think of the name of a group that has like all the collectibles catalog, post it in the collector's group. Oh, yeah. Okay. Let's do one more t-shirt. Let's do the it. The final t-shirt. Can I see the question in advance? Oh, okay. That's good. So all you Assassin's Creed's aficionados. This is proof, by the way, that none of this is scripted. Like, I literally don't even know what the question is. <laughs> Well, I can't. I wanted to come up with it like right before, and I did that. It's good. Not I actually I was knew the answer to this in advance. Oh, uh, did you? No, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> no. 
<laughs> All right, so if you have the answer, you're going to put it in the chat. We're going to do it the same way as before. How's it spelled? Let me see. Okay. Does it have to be spelled correctly? It has, it to, has be spelled, to be yeah. spelled correctly. It has correctly. to be spelled Absolutely. correctly. And the first person who Dan sees in the chat. Are you sure are you sure you typed this, this is right? Yeah, I okay. triple right. checked. Right, if I'm go. wrong, uh, I'll take it on. But what is Amunet's son's name? Geralt on the stuffed unicorn. What is happening oh. in the chat right now? <laughs> All right, repeat the question. That was like my dream Re last repeat night. Repeat the question again. Who knew that? <laughs> what is Amunet's son's name? And now I'm going to go oh, back. To oh, okay. Wait. The and first it has to guess. Be spelled correctly. The first guess. Uh, not, okay. Well, God. So Natalie, you were the first to guess, <laughs> but you misspelled it. So Aww. this is the right spelling. Mm -hmm. So the first person is Zeratulos. I'm sorry if I'm destroying your name, by the way. So Zeratulos, you are the winner of Yay. the statue. Natalie, you missed the letter. There was an eight. You missed the H. I'm sorry. Well, we're going to have lots more contests with Pure Arts t-shirts because I ordered a ton, and now I'm like, i got to give these away. So I'm going to start well done. Doling them out. We're start, yeah, we got too many t-shirts. <laughs> you're going to get rid of these t-shirts. Congratulations to our four winners today. Congrats, everybody. That was awesome. And don't worry, the people that won the big statues, if you weren't on the chat, I'll I'm just I'm going to email you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> cool. All right. Anything else? Uh, I think that's it, right? I got nothing on the back That's end. all our schedule. That's it. Oh, by the way, Bayek, there's going to be more of these coming out. Um, for those of you that want to order one and it's out of stock and where you happen to be, uh, there's a new batch of Bayex that are being worked on, by the way. So I think, again, end of the year, there'll be some more Bayex, just while we have it here. Uh, let's see. Uh, please try to get Silent Hill license. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It always made in small scale by other companies. Pro to do pros. Yeah. That would be, Silent Hill would be cool. That's a good idea, for sure. Yeah. That's a cool. There's there are so many good licenses that we'd love to do, but it's just like a matter of time and a matter of just acquiring them. It's, it's, it can be tough sometimes, or sometimes the conditions of the licensor are just too, you know, it would it would jack up the statue's price so much that it would just be like insane. Because you know, if somebody wants half a million dollars and we're only doing a thousand or fifteen hundred statues just to pay the licensing fees, you know, that's a crazy amount. So it's uh, we're always working on new stuff. So, that's oh, it? Yep, that's it. Oh, and we may or may not have a haunted basement. We call it the dungeon because this is a really old building here in Montreal. Mm, so, I, yeah. <laughs> I'm thinking, even though I'm terrified of it, I'm thinking that we should do a live stream for Halloween down there and just make it super creepy. And I will be naturally terrified, so it'll add to the ambiance. And, yeah. You what gonna, do you guys are, think? Are you going to dress up? Oh, yeah, of course. Okay, it's so Halloween. We, do we do a Halloween? Live stream from the haunted basement. It's of the not PR a haunted. Studio. It's for sure haunted. It's because we're in an older building in the old port of Montreal, and it's just kind of. There's a lot of like old pipes and valves and things yes, to turn. Got the and, creepy factor. He's the skeptic, and I'm terrified. Because Melissa goes downstairs, and all she sees are like meat hooks and chains <laughs> hanging off those pipes. That's why she's just. <laughs> well, to give you context, that's where we filmed the trailer with the liquor. Like it looks like that. It's very anyway. <laughs> If you like that idea of me being terrified out of my mind in costume, let us know. All right, I'm checking for any more uh, AC16 scale. Uh, do you mean like articulated figures, the 16 articulated? I'm assuming that's what you mean. Um, and yes, there could be more. Nothing. Oh yeah, it's true. That's what the, we didn't even talk about that. Yeah, what's that? There's another Assassin's Creed articulated figure coming. Yeah, and there is E in the name of the, <laughs> in the title of the product. You give the best. Right? So yeah, there actually is another. The prototype is here. It's actually going to be shot very mm -hmm. soon after we're done shooting the Lord of the Rings piece. I'm trying really hard not to say things. Another Dan uh, Clue. Yeah, so, so yes, there is another piece. It's going to be released in either October or November. It'll be the 1-6 articulated Assassin's mm -hmm. Creed figure coming out. And there will be a, like a super, I think, is there a deluxe version or do we, I, I can't remember if there's going to be a deluxe version or just one that comes with some, some cool accessories. Uh, so yeah, yes, AAC articulated. Well, you know, we already have uh, Ivor, which is right over, oh, it's up there. Oh, don't touch him though, he just. He's, yeah, he's fragile. He's like in his spot. <laughs> so if you haven't seen it, go on purearts.com, go check it out. There is an Ivor articulated figure, which is really, really nice, insanely yeah. detailed. The clothing on it is really, really well done, actually. It's super nice. 
Um, yeah, so there is another 1.6 coming, articulated. Okay, it, could, it couldn't sound more haunted. There are, I'm, you know what, honestly, the basement, there are people here that will not go in the basement, like, because the lights are off, so you have to go into the basement to turn on the lights. There are people, including this one, that refuse to go downstairs unless like all the lights are on and somebody's down there. Already. We were going down there for a meeting the other day uh, on Tuesday, and I was first in the line. Then I was like, oh, nope, and I just like let everybody pass by me down the stairs. And that's where Lodalis is hiding right now, by the way. She may never come out. Well, <laughs> All right, uh, will there be more Witcher statues in the future? I'm sure we'll do more stuff with the Witcher. For now, we're just going to deal with our, our huge Geralt statue. Let's get him out the door first. Um, we want to show him off in an upcoming live stream, of course. We're going to want to show him on screen, do close-ups, give you an idea of just how gigantic it is, because, I mean, it's like literally like this big. Um, yeah, we'll do a live stream where it's in front of us. You just won't see us. It'll just be like the Witcher statues <laughs> talking to you, because it's so massive. Um, so yeah, let's get that guy out the way, uh, out of the door, and then we'll we'll deal with uh, what's coming next. Thank you so much for joining us today. This was really fun. This was awesome. I have no yeah. idea how long we've been going, yeah. but this was this was super fun. First one in three months, right? Yeah. So guys, thank you so much for joining us. Really, really appreciate it. Um, we'll keep you guys posted on social media, right, about which show we're doing next. So if you guys happen to be, if if New York works out. We'll let you know, and if you happen to be in the New York area or, you know, a few hours away, take a bus, come and check us out. Um, we'll keep you posted on what's going on with other shows. Um, and, of course, we'll do unboxings. We've got unboxings coming up. We're going to be, we've, we've been kind of relaxing on the unboxings. Yeah. I'm not going to lie, we've been slacking on the unboxings. So we, gonna, we have been? Yeah, this is all your fault. I didn't <laughs> want to say you, so I was trying to be nice, but yeah. yeah it's your fault. All right. So, yeah, we got lots more coming up, guys. So, thank you so much. Have a great evening, morning, day, wherever time zone you're in. And follow us on our Facebook group. Yeah, join the Facebook group. Okay, guys, thank you so much. We'll see Bye. you guys later. Have a good one. Bye.